Yes, yep. we can. All right, cool. Um, yeah, uh, happy to be here. Uh, it's always fun to come back to this forum uh, and uh, kind of share the little knowledge I've gathered over the uh, past few years. Um, so uh, let's hope uh, we both can learn um, from each other today. Uh, I expect some share from you guys as well based on your life experiences. That will be cool to hear too. Um, so yeah, today we'll probably go over a few little concepts and some learnings on um, like what exactly is ideation and prototyping is. Um, and uh, how does this fit into the design thinking process, right? So that's what we're going to learn today. And uh, starting with a small quote, um, yeah, the best way to idea, have an idea is actually to have like lots of ideas. So that is actually one of my biggest mantra in life. Uh, I usually tell them like when it comes to ideation, um, go for quantity over quality. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll eventually reach for quality, but ideation is all about generating as much ideas as possible. That should be the baseline. Um, then Moving on, so yeah, so I think at this stage we all know um, ideation comes after the initial research and definition phase in our design thinking process. And uh, ideation is basically where uh, you kind of like unlock all of your creative juices and uh, you create as many ideas as possible, like what I was saying earlier. And uh, it can be as crazy as possible or, or as dumb as possible, who cares? It's all about creating ideas. And um, um, we'll also use sort of like fun activities. They're like, they're like endless activities which you can utilize during the ideation phase. Um, you can also do ideation on your own or you can do with a group. So um, yeah, but essentially we are creating ideas to tackle a specific problem or to fulfill a specific goal. Um, and that comes exactly after you do your research and define like what you're going to do. And uh, moving on, so why ideation is super crucial or important in your design thinking process or in, or in any of the project that you might be doing, right? So why it is important? So three, I would say three core reasons. One is actually, uh, uh, yeah, setting a creative mindset. Um, so it encourages anybody who is actually part of the project or part of the design thinking process um, to explore and uh, create ideas that's actually not, um, you know, like out of the box, right? So having that mindset is what uh, ideation would actually like help you create. And second one is actually collaborative innovation. Um, so it brings the different viewpoints of different team members together, uh, which you might actually um, uh, lose by not doing ideation with a with a wide group of audience and then finally uh, beyond the usual ideas so it opens up uh, uh, possible ideas which you might have never thought of um, by including others so yeah so the i would say these are the core reasons why ideation is super crucial it doesn't matter i, I would always recommend doing ideation for any project you're doing and uh, what are some of the popular ideation techniques um, that uh, you can use um, so yeah i'm gonna go over probably like four or five, six here, uh, because there are like so many ideas. I'll give you some um, uh, websites uh, and uh, resources where you can go and check out all of the ideas. But some of the ideas that, that I'm comfortable using on my projects are basic like brainstorming, which is the most um, a common method that's used by most of the teams and members, right? So where you just sit with the team and uh, you, you kind of like lay out the problem and uh, what you're trying to solve and everybody starts talking about solutions, right? Um, yeah, uh, the only problem is, uh, if it is brainstorming, uh, only people with like louder voices, like people who like to talk more, uh, will actually share more. And people who are a little bit introverted, people who are not comfortable with group scenarios, um, they actually kind of like shut down. So that's the only issue with brainstorming. Um, to solve that, we are going to move to the second method. Second method is called brain writing, where uh, we ask users to uh, write down all of their ideas before we start speaking about it. So participants usually write down all of their ideas, they pass down the paper, and then the next participants um, who uh, actually uh, take take the idea of the previous participant? They actually add on to it. They will they'll they'll elaborate the ideas and then and then it keeps moving on. Um, so finally, everybody uh, you know collects the ideas and uh, we start discussing on that. Um, so this one is a little bit more uh, um, uh, good for uh, a group where you have both a mix of introverts and extroverts uh, because everybody gets a chance to share their ideas. Um, the worst possible idea. Uh, that's one of the, one of the one of the fun methods uh, where you can create as many as bad ideas you can like like let's just take a problem and uh, instead of solving the problem you can actually create like 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 bad solutions for it and then you kind of like list down all of the bad bad solutions and then and then you decide which uh factor actually makes it really worse and then and then you take take that factor and you kind of like find a solution for that factor so so in 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 in, in reverse process you're actually making a problem into a into a good problem by making the problem into the worst problem so in that way the worst possible idea or reverse brainstorming as some few people would like to 
to call it, uh, is actually like very cool, cool and fun way uh, to actually solve a problem. Um, couple of other methods, a scamper method. I'm, I'm sure many of you guys might have heard it. Uh, it's, it's much more of a structured approach. It, it's not something that I would recommend using for like a, a uh, for like a goal or a project that you might have where nothing exists. Uh, this is this is a method which you can use probably for like an um, a project or a or a or a or a or a, or a situation where you already have like set of ideas to explore. Um, that's where you can use a scamper method because as as you can see, scamper basically means substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, and reverse. Right. So you can utilize any one of these methods or set of these methods in like any order you want uh, to actually explore that particular current set of ideas and and make it into a new actionable item. Um, so in that way, this uh, this one is like really useful uh, and and it works out very brilliantly. And uh, finally, mind mapping. Uh, I'm sure some of us might have definitely used this. Is basically like yeah, you write down um, your main idea in the center of the board, and then you start branching out uh, into like sub ideas. And then last, uh, crazy eights. Uh, crazy eights is basically a time boxed um, style of collecting ideas, where um, we ask users to um, take a take a minute for like each idea, eight stickies or like eight boxes where people usually sketch out or write down ideas. And uh, once time goes up, you know, people share their ideas and then and then we do like a regrouping, uh, then we do some voting and then from there we proceed. And yeah, as I said, like, you know, there are like at least, uh, I know, 20, 30 more uh, ideation methods uh, that uh, we can use. But I would say these are the six methods uh, that, that I am usually uh, using on my uh, on my day to day uh, work. Uh, so I would definitely recommend starting with these ones because these ones are much more easier. And all you need is probably a mirror board or a fig jam board or even like, you know, if you're in, if you're in, if you're in meeting rooms, you can just use some sticky notes to to do this um let me proceed yeah um so usually ideations uh, as I, as i was saying you can do it alone uh, or it's I, I usually recommend doing it in like a hybrid approach where you, you kind of like start do your ideation on your own first and then you proceed with a group activity uh, if it's a group activity we usually call them as an ideation workshop and uh, in in a workshop so we actually have like a, a basic structure where uh, we define the problem then we pick the activities that we want to use to generate ideas because depending on the problem or the type of uh, solution that you're trying to create activities could be different and then uh, you set up the activity uh, then um, you facilitate the meeting uh, uh, and then you collect the ideas and finally you move on to voting so this is this is kind of like the basic structure of, of like any any ideation workshop or any idea ideation session that you guys might be doing uh, it's you st starts with a problem then 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 defining the activity then setting up the activity then running the activities and then finally voting on the ideas that you're collecting right so those are the five steps um, then uh, so who should be part of this workshops so usually we have a facilitator that's usually us uh, as uh, UX designers or product designers or researchers um, or product managers, whomever it is, right? So to like that person will be the facilitator. Um, you can you can do multiple groups at the same time, but uh, as you guys can see in the notes here, we usually uh, I usually recommend like maybe having like seven to eight uh, per group to facilitate because anything beyond that will just add on more complexity and you will need like more time to talk to everybody, right? So I usually recommend having like multiple facilitators if your group is like beyond the size of eight um, and uh, yeah whom to include then yeah different team members uh, yeah you can include anybody apart from UX and UI like developers product managers pro like PJMs client side stakeholders anybody that you want who is uh, uh, involved in, in, in this project in terms of not just direct contribution also like indirect contribution right so anybody who you think would be valuable definitely include them um, um, and uh, it just helps us with uh, either setting the context and also to generate more ideas which we have never thought about right so yeah um then let's move on so to create best set of ideas or results in these workshops like so what do we need to do as i was saying like yeah go for quantity over quality um, um as i was saying like once we once we generate a lot of ideas, then we can narrow down to the best ideas from there. So we should always like aim for quantity. Like don't worry about like, oh, each idea I, I'm, I'm writing should be the best one. No, like it's okay, even if it is like a you know, very simple idea, that's totally fine. Um, then uh, define the problems like very clearly so that uh, users uh, or the participants of your workshops or activity um, can actually um, think about like what exactly they need to solve. Um, sometimes it's, it's nice to have abstract if you're not sure about uh, 
uh, or 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 if you are, if you don't want to lead users into a specific problem then yeah you can keep it abstract but still like you know having a high level problem statement would really help users um, then uh, yeah, creating like new perspectives uh, so you can always like use different different type of activities as i was saying uh, to actually mix and match ideas to create like new ideas from there uh, we'll probably see uh, some of these in the, in, the, in the later part of the presentation um, then thinking visually so uh, we all know that only certain people are comfortable with uh, communicating ideas visually, like using sketches or maybe like creating a quick wireframe or whatever is it. Um, but uh, many of us are, in, in, in terms of ideation, we usually go for sticky notes and we start typing out sticky notes. So if there is ever a way for you to engage users to communicate their ideas visually, please utilize it. Um, then yeah, alone and together. Um, yeah, I think I spoke about it. Try to go all again. Then uh, safe space. Um, this is like very crucial. Uh, so to set the context that any idea is actually like good, uh, to make sure that we have a safe space where people feel like their idea would not be judged uh, or would not be made fun of, right? So um, that's where I would say like whenever you're creating a workshop, make sure that, that you encourage users to like contribute more and more and make sure that uh, you set the stage up front that, you know, like people should not be uh, judging any of the ideas. So yeah, um, moving on. So. Uh, maybe to experience all this, we can do a quick activity, if you guys are fine with it, yeah? Cool. Um, Alicia, you want to share the uh, the credentials? Yeah. For sure. So I'm going to drop a link to a Miro board uh, in the chat. The, yeah. It has a password when you open up the link, and the password is 1 through 8. I'm also sticking that in the note. Okay, so go to chat to open up the mirror board. Yeah, let me know once you, everybody's here. Um, then we can start the activity. Okay, let's see if we're starting to trickle in. Um, okay, cool. I'll bring you guys all towards me. Okay, um, I'm going to give a quick pre uh, idea about like what we're going to do today so here's an hypothetical scenario uh, that i've placed before you guys um i'll i'll go the 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 problem and what we're trying to solve now so basically uh this is charlotte ling here's a small person for you guys to like empathize with um yeah uh, she's in new york same city as alicia and uh, she's a marketing intern and uh, she loves animals she has a cat and dog um, she's very active she loves uh, doing activities with her pets right so yeah um even though she has a very busy schedule, she always makes time for her pets and um, she doesn't uh, spend money on herself, um, And uh, she, but she makes sure, you know, her pets are like super um, well spoiled. Um, in terms of her needs, uh, apparently by, by tech um, diagrams, we can see she's like super tech oriented person. Um, but her needs are the care for her animals or her top quality and the need to trust her animal caretakers. Uh, what, are, what are her frustrations? Um, the pets are very old and she needs a dependable clinic that she can rely on. Um, her animals are super skittish and uh, they do not do well in like very busy environments. Um, a simple quote from her, my pet mean the world to me and I consider them to be my children. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, the problem from here that we are trying to solve is uh, customers are complaining about long queues and wait times in veterinary clinic rooms and um, how we might um, or how we how might we improve the waiting room experience so that um, users um, satisfaction improves and uh, you know they can like return to the clinic again and again right so that's what we're trying to solve now some context here about like uh, veterinary clinics and and their waiting rooms um, like yeah typically there's like at least a 20 minute wait um, past the appointment time uh, even though it's rare to wait like more than 30 minutes like why there are longer wait times uh, 
there are like four core reasons one is actually like critical and emergency arrivals might uh, be might be taken more uh, might replace your your time and then yeah late arrivals to appointments uh, and then nervous wet patients and then difficult situations like you know like serious conditions on your pets or death or anything you know that might take much more time for doctors to communicate and talk to you so taking these as some context and stuff we'll try to solve the problem which is again like customers complaining about the wait time and is there a way that we can help them to navigate this problem so that you know they uh, have much more improved satisfaction with veterinary clinics um, and uh, starting with a small fun activity i always like recommend uh, um, i always recommend uh, um, the team members whom i'm working with uh, to actually don't immediately jump into ideation, um, do some fun activity. It could be an icebreaker activity. It could be something that has to do with the actual problem itself. That's what I usually recommend. In this case, we are going to use a concept called as a sacrificial concepts. Um, this was, I think this was, uh, I heard it from, from IDEO, like one of the IDEO sessions. Uh, and I thought this was a fun activity um, where you basically come up with three to fun, five concepts uh, of ideas, which you know, it'll hundred percent will not work. Like for sure, this is, this is practically not possible. Uh, but but that basically allows you to like expand all of the all of the energy of like thinking in the extreme uh, scenarios right so that's what in this case a quick example here is like hey um is there a way to quicken the check-in 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 time that like, you know like when customers come go to a hotel uh, or, or a lodging space they're trying to check in and then by the time they they reach the room it usually takes around like what 20, maybe like 15 to 30 minutes so is there a way to make it quicker and here are some some fun ideas which will never work obviously the like customers can drive their car directly into the room that they want that they're going to stay um, and uh, you know check-in happens there or customers will be sent through a tube system uh, to their room after check-in so that they don't have to take the elevator or stairs or or hotels can ship an electronic wristband to customers, um, kind of like a tag, which automatically checks in and tracks users as they walk in, right? So these are ideas which obviously none of the hotels will use to actually improve the experience of um, users. But we create these ideas just to expand all of the extreme concepts that we might have in mind, right? So yeah, so we're going to use this concept um, So for our problem. So in this case, uh, um, how can we make sure that users never wait um, for veterinarians when they visit so thinking this as a problem um, yeah just just write down drop three to five extreme ideas that you, you guys might have which you think will never work any questions though or if you guys are super clear please go on yeah Do you, do you want to give a specific number of minutes that we want to work on this? Uh, when, sure. uh, I mean, okay. I mean, we have only what, like uh, 12 people. That's fine. We'll take like five minutes. If you guys want uh, the, the usual suspects, then I can do, yeah. Oh, the timer. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll do, do the elevator music. I wish I can play some uh, my Spotify, but I don't think so. But sure, we'll do the smooth groove. Mm. Can you guys listen to music? Yeah, okay. I, hey, so. I hear it. Sounds great. Yeah, we can hear it. <laughs> I love it. It gives me like beachy vibes. Oh, okay. Maybe I should have played something that gave you the New York vibes. <laughs> <laughs> that beach is great. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Balance. I like this idea, prioritizing by the cutest pet. That's a fun idea. <laughs> I wonder if people who have pugs will never get treated at time.
if the tracks are longer. See a lot of great ideas here. I do like the idea of bribing people. Yeah. Ooh, free meal, free pizza. I mean, is it for the pets or for the owners? Thirty seconds more. need more time I mean it's okay people who are writing finish it up it's okay totally fine yeah no problem people who are writing the ideas finish up that's fine I see some great ideas here <laughs> Clinic, clinics can enroll veterinarians remotely okay have two separate rooms one for patient with non-emergency and emergency um, okay and then provide iPad movie VR simulations hmm. patient with five minutes pass Okay, I feel like this person is more worried about the owners than the dogs or the cats. <laughs> they well, only, ideas. Dogs, only dogs that can do tricks are allowed in. That's a good <laughs> Yeah, it's too. Cutest pet can get in first, prioritizing by pet by size, prioritizing pet. Okay, this person is a product manager, right? You're just doing all sorts of prioritization here. <laughs> uh, okay, patient can cut in and oh, I, I like this idea. This is totally me. Pay some extra money, bar okay, bribe, make some connection with the staff. Ooh, okay. That's that's actually a good idea. Make some friends with the people who make the bookings. Pets can uh, run inside on their own and leave no option. Okay, cool. Be super hyper and eat the head out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pet owners or members can reduce a uh, fifty percent. Give them some fun task, fixing their schedule. Uh, escape room scenario. Whoa. Okay, I guess people are going to be stuck there forever. Uh, let's call up patients according to the pet type. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Each patient has only 30 minutes to get in the pit. Ooh, okay. I think this is more practical. This is not extreme, but this is fun too. Yeah. Each pet gets one bet dedicated. Ah, higher tons of bet. Fair enough. Buzzer. Okay. Uh, assign one bet. Ah, this is the same. Pet owners play games with their pets. Loudest pet goes first. Oh, I haven't met my dog. Um, then detect the cost. Okay, pets that are aggressive or too large will be banned. Oh, dang. Too large? Isn't that too harsh? Categories of pets by their sizes and breeds. Person who late for appointments would never be able to visit again. Pet owners can fix it. Okay. Oh, hire a magician. Totally love this idea. Plus one. Bring a magician or entertainer, only dogs that can do tricks allowed. Ooh, that's fun. Maybe allocating one pet, maybe having long hours at the vet instead of a lot of vegetarian suggestions. Hmm. Cool ideas, I would say. Okay, are you guys happy with all the extreme ideas that you guys created? Yeah? Uh, okay, next, uh, let's move on to the next section. 
this is where we will do our crazy aids where we'll create some of our practical ideas which would help our customers to improve the waiting room experience right to get more satisfaction uh, i'm going to give you guys five minutes uh, each person create eight ideas okay maximum eight it's okay if, if you're not able to create eight ideas that's totally fine um so why don't i why don't i lock this one don't worry yeah and let's choose a different music now maybe we'll do some uptown funk <laughs>
Again, need more time. Yeah. You guys need no more time, let me know. I guess nobody wants more time. Okay, why don't you guys finish up? That's okay, it's totally fine. You guys can finish whatever stickies that you guys are writing down. And then I'm gonna need three volunteers to walk us through the ideas that they have generated. So any volunteers? Okay, so I'm gonna then call out people then. Um, that's fine. I hope so. Um, why don't we start with Christina? Because you said Thailand, that's your punishment. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, okay. Um, yeah, so offer check-ins ahead of time by phone or text, just so there's like, they, they can minimize the amount of time that they're in the waiting room. I feel like that would be helpful. Okay. Um, playing soothing music in the weight room that is relaxing for pets and their parents. They say that classical music is soothing for even pets. So that might help because, you know, I'm sure that everyone's pretty stressed out. Mm -hmm. um, put on a nature show on TV so pets and parents can watch together and relax. That's also something that some people do. Um, my friend would put on a nature shows for her, for her cat. I guess it seemed to help. <laughs> Um, try to minimize the smells, open windows or have an air purifier running. I know for sure whenever I go to the vet, like the smell is really, it's really rough. Um, mm -hmm. make sure the seats are comfortable and there's enough space for pets to sit with them comfortably. Um, have treats available for good doggies and good kitties, Maybe like dog bones or something, water, I don't know, just make them comfortable. Okay. Um, and then when it's really busy, like during the busy times of day, um, make sure that there's enough staff so that there's less wait time. And then depending upon the severity of the problem, uh, how bad the emergency is, maybe having separate waiting rooms. Um, so the, the animals that are having, you know, more urgent issues or they're under distress could be put in a different room so they don't disturb the other pets. Okay. Awesome. Uh, who wants to go next? Who wrote the Elo stickies? The one on the left side. The one I'm clicking around. Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Go on. Um, yeah, so came up with some interesting ideas. Um, like the idea of charging um, different rates, having peak and off peak hours. So people could kind of prioritize their pet's emergency. Like if it wasn't as big of an emergency, they could um, have it be a little bit later when they come in. Um, again, the same thing, offering treats, um, having calming music, um, having the option of offering like a virtual check-in so the owners could start the paperwork um, up to an hour ahead of the appointment, um, calling ahead and getting your name on a virtual list to reduce the wait time, um, having a separate wing for like exotic pets because sometimes like their sounds could like stress out the other pets mm -hmm. and then also having like isolation rooms for pets that are like really stressed that don't like want to be around anyone else having that option um having more experienced vets for extreme emergencies and having the newer vets um handle checkups and small emergencies i think that's pretty much everything awesome and uh one last person uh i don't know who's this one what color is this okay um, um... Is this purple? Is it, I don't know. What color is this? So this it's one. purple. Yeah, it's purple. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not colorblind then. Okay. Uh, so who wrote this? Can this person probably give us a, give us a walkthrough of their ideas? Yeah, I wrote this. This is Tanya here. And I have mentioned a few ideas like uh, users with delayed arrival will be given a late next appointment. They wouldn't be considered for appointment easier so that they can be really on time. 
if uh, you should also tell them if the appointment is at 10, you can probably tell them it's at 9.45. 9 <laughs> so okay. And if you are on time for all their visits and seeing their uh, consistency, they'll be rewarded with a free session or a pet's play date. Mm -hmm. Emergency attending should be a different queue. Uh, uh, you can show some videos on how to take care of pets while they are wait time. They can also have a pet's play area to be available for waiting people. Okay. Some pets. And uh, if you are late uh, while leaving your home, still you'll be notified then and there so that you avoid the commute, you save your commute time. And there should be a self check in counter where you can check in much ahead of time and there'll be no chaos standing in a queue. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, thanks for dropping all these ideas. Uh, so next step uh, is basically yeah, affinity mapping where we're going to group some of these ideas. So I'm going to ask the three people who spoke now, can you guys do me a, do me a big help and then start grabbing these stickies or, or duplicate this stuff each sticky. You know what? Just hold on one second. We can just move all of these ideas in here and can you guys group them together like all the ideas that are that belong to the same bucket can you guys start grouping them together oh let's take a couple of minutes for it yeah others are welcome to please if you guys want to help them group the stickies together like the ideas which belong to the same group you can drop them next to each other yeah what play some music
Let's okay, keep going. Yeah, the, the, the idea is to like group ideas which are similar together and then sort of like give them a title uh, so that we can proceed to our next um, activity um, in terms of ideation, um, which is basically uh, us doing a, a voting exercise. In this case, uh, let's just say uh, we have like at least uh, five to six um, groupings, right? So we can, we can probably like stop there. Um, incentives and rewards, yeah, drop there. Entertainment while waiting, play area for owner and pet. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start voting for you guys. And uh, let's start some voting. We'll do some text and shapes. So okay. I'm gonna give each of you guys like two votes, okay? Two votes and uh, one minute for voting. And uh, I think we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six categories to vote. So I'm gonna start voting now, okay? It's okay, we can, we can stop grouping now. This was just an example, so it's fine. Um, so I've started voting now. I'm sure you guys can see now, yeah? So if you guys can see now, yeah, drop drop your votes. Uh, you, ha you have two votes. You have like a minute to pick the two groups that you think are like most uh, important feature that we could you know expand further, which would help improve users' experience in terms of waiting room. Um, How many votes can we do? Two. Two? Okay. Two, yeah. Can you guys see it? No? I see five people watered. Yeah. Yep. I see it. It's there. Yeah. I guess people just need like a second to decide. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> if you guys need another minute, I can I can add one more minute. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The last person is really thinking hard. I like it. I think they like all the ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna end this now. Uh, okay, all 10 person voted. And for all. In session, preparing results. Okay, so seems like a, a majority of people want to have a play area for owners and pets and also like do something about advanced and online checking. Okay, fair enough. So those are the two core areas that I would say I would probably expand on if I was working on this problem. Uh, this is where I'm going to go ahead and start creating detailed design sketches or, you know, like whatever requirements and we'll expand further on this. Um, so since we have done this, thank you for joining this small activity. Let's go back to our presentation. Uh, I put together a small set of like slide with all the links added of tools which I usually use, which would help me with ideas in session. So all the collaboration tools, um, and then uh, the activity tools themselves, and then uh, the resources like or like some of the like these four websites are the ones where I usually go to help me pick the activities, like which activity I want to use, right? So these are the four websites, and then. Uh, some books and stuff uh, which I usually recommend people to read if, they, if they're interested in concepting and ideation. Um, so you guys can check it out later. Um, proceeding to like prototyping from here, let's just imagine we did our ideation, we created some of the concept sketches and everything, right? And then now we need to proceed to a prototyping phase where, yeah, so like just like uh, Tom and David from IDOC is, um, you know, a prototype is actually worth 1000 meeting because it explains everything for a lot of people. Um, you don't have to sit and go through everything. Um, so prototyping, uh, I think we all know it's basically a process where we build um, either um, a paper prototype or a mid or a high fidelity prototype or even like a interactive um, front end developer prototype, right? So to represent the design concepts that we were working on. Um, these uh, prototypes help us in different ways. So we'll, we'll see like how it helps us. Um, yeah, why it is important. So to number one, to visualize the idea because basically we spoke about waiting area, we spoke about 
um, uh, owners and pets having games we spoke about like online checking, uh, advanced checking, all those things. So it's, it would basically help us to visualize how it's all going to come together. Uh, it helps everybody in this project with like with like varied levels of experience in terms of like visualization to understand how this all works and then reducing the risks. So it helps us catch potential issues and flaws that we didn't think of because now we have started designing, right? So yeah, and then collaboration and buy-ins, um, it helps us to communicate our ideas better. So it would lead to client understanding the concept that we are trying to put together and then, you know, them saying yes. And then finally, this would help us in collecting the feedback, which comes in the next phase. Um, then yeah, low fidelity, uh, I know I have this GIF here, but uh, but low fidelity doesn't always mean like you have to like, scroll, like draw it on paper, okay? Low fidelity also means like, you know, it's something that you can do on Figma or Sketch or Balsamic, uh, which which is literally like a drawing a box and just dropping a text too, so it doesn't matter. And uh, I, like, why do we do it? Like for me, uh, I do low fidelity whenever I know, I just need like some quick feedback on, on, on particular, uh, concepts with users or with clients or with stakeholders everybody or I, I need to draw it out quickly to explain how it looks and feels to certain set of people who have hard time visualizing the content right so yeah it is fast it is easy but uh, if you're doing these kind of like the ones I have in GIF right this this actually takes time like I know people do it call it paper sketches but to draw everything over paper neatly with like good handwriting and then and then cutting everything out, it actually takes more time. Um, so you can do it if it is for like just for like one flow or like one concept, right? But if you're trying to like paper sketch out your whole application, then I would say like don't do it. That's not worth it. It actually takes more than more time than doing doing on Figma or Sketch. Um, then uh, mid fidelity. This is the most common. I'm guessing most people would would do uh, in terms of like wireframing activity, um, where we create a grayscale version of our um, of our application or website or platform whatever is it and maybe like a limited functionality with like some limited copy and some some level of interaction um this is where the idea is a little bit more like solidified and we need to like refine and add more details into the design right so that's where i would say like we can probably like use this um uh, again this uh, would help both set of users like users and also your developers or product managers or clients to understand screens and features much more uh, in detail right so yeah figma sketch adobe xd azure like these tools like we use on day to day yeah we can use these tools to create these ones and then finally the the high fidelity ones where it's more like a realistic approximation or realistic version almost close to the real real version of like what your users might experience when your product is launched this is where we would have like lots of like ui animation transitions and all those things um uh, we might even have like a fake database to help users to experience like how it works and feels right so yeah um this is where uh, i would say like we we do use it to either to collect feedback uh, uh, from users 100 percent yes and also like we use it mainly i would say most of the times when client come and ask us for like this high fidelity prototype it's either to demo the product um or it's for like you know like to publish it as a case study on the website and stuff. So that's where I have seen most use case, but do we create like this, this level of high fidelity uh, prototype for testing? No, I don't think clients would have that much money and time for, for you to spend six months in creating a prototype, right? So most of the times we create this for either a demo or for case study when clients don't have money to develop a whole product. Um, and, uh, uh, how yeah so these are some of the tools that i personally use like origami studio or framer or azure or principle like a lot of these tools like we can use uh, to create like nice high fidelity prototype with like superb transactions a lot of like micro interactions so yeah um uh, my personal favorite fav favorite is would be like probably yeah i use a mixture of like figma and lottie and then you know like some origami studio or principle i actually like mix of tools to bring in some of these elements so yeah um how to decide uh, what is the level of fidelity or like which ones to uh, to prototype right so you should probably like ask her like these four questions um, basically like yeah like what device i'm prototyping this for uh, like what is the fidelity that i want so that you know it depends on like like what like what is my purpose and then like what are the interactions and flows like do i need to do everything or i usually recommend focusing on like maybe like four to six core experiences it doesn't matter if you're going to create a prototype focus on core experiences don't try to prototype every inch of your experience and then um, how much time um do i have to create this prototype um usually the formula that i we follow is basically you spend time on like ui design and then we give like a week or two to create the prototypes depending on what is the output um so yeah overall that kind of like quickly covers both prototype and ideation um 
I know we have like one more minute, but sure. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please do ask me and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, sure. You can, you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you'd like to ask. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't have a very fancy question, but uh, something that popped in my mind. Uh, I mean, I work as a UI and visual designer. I don't have a UX background, but uh, I do know and learn about uh, UX stuff. So uh, what I'm curious about this, uh, uh, about is this, uh, yeah. do UX professionals, uh, Actually, when exactly would you say they start to worry about the technical feasibility and uh, possibility of the features that are going to be implemented uh, based on the UX outputs and research uh, during this prototyping session? Or they don't mind the uh, technical uh, dimension of the project that much at that phase? That's what I'm curious about, actually. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, I would say uh, uh, it could change depending on the type of project you are on. For example, if if uh, like for okay, I would say like I I recently worked in a project where the clients wanted us to explore what could be their possible future. Right. That means I don't have any kind of like technical restriction um, attached to me, so I could do all sorts of exploration that I want, like after my research uh, and definition phase, where I could create concepts. Uh, with uh, thinking, thinking like basically, I, I could create like the blue sky concepts, which which you which the the client might not be able to like uh, implement right now, but still they are they they are okay with us generating those kind of ideas because they are asking us to create these concepts for future. So in that case, I would say like yeah, there's like low technical feasibility which would come to my mind because I'm more focusing on creating this perfect experience for users for the future, right? So yeah, but in case but on a on a usual project where the client might have an existing system or or some kind of experience and we are trying to like upgrade that experience, um, then then usually we we, we do a research. Uh, which is usually like anywhere between like four to eight weeks or even like uh, 12 weeks. And uh, once the research is done and, and the moment where uh, we start crafting our customer journey uh, and, and, and the product team, the product manager start crafting up, <clears throat> start crafting up the product roadma roadmap, right? So that is exactly when the UX team, the strategy team and the, and the product team and the tech team would actually come together and sit together to talk about like what is the priority of this particular features according to the journey map that we are creating so that is the phase i would say where usually or or like i tend to have discussions with my product manager or or with my technical or my technology lead where hey this is the ideal customer experience and uh, these are the features that that i would like to have for our customers in in this particular product experience and that is when uh, the technological lead is going to say okay this is my tech stack and these are the features that are available for us right now and uh, and we can't do this we can do this you know that's where the trade-off starts happening so i would say it's it's pretty much towards the end of the research uh, and uh, and 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 the beginning of the ideation phase. Uh, in between that is when we usually like start thinking about the feasibility of uh, of like how much I can actually push through in terms of design. And that's where I, I'll start getting a rough idea of what I can do, what I cannot do, and and that kind of gets translated into the into the ideation and concept sketches, right? So once we start developing those things then then possibly like you know like how when we go to a design review with my product managers clients and everybody and that is when you know absolute 100 percent detailing on like oh you know what like this this whole feature is possible but this xyz things are not possible because this like our, our particular tool would not support that right so that's where i would say we start getting into those uh, small details uh, but uh, but on a, on a face level it starts from the end of research to um, I would say towards the beginning of implementation that that whole phase we will we'll have that discussion on what is possible and what is not possible. Oh, that sounds like a great spot. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Halik, we have one question in chat. Do you have an extra okay. minute? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, what phase uh, we should be doing usability testing? Um, fair enough. So usability testing, uh, 
I would say again depends on your your like your client needs. Um, I I have I have done usability testing upfront during the during the research phase because clients already have an existing system. They did not. This was like a few years back, so I wouldn't say like most people would do it now, but they do have an existing system and where we didn't UT on their current system um, with users because they have no clue uh, because and, and, and they also did not have any kind of like tracking metrics available. So that's why we ran on usability testing to get some feedback from their customers. Uh, we also like ran some surveys and everything. So you can obviously, yes, you can run an, run an UT with an existing system right up front, uh, but ideal phase of running an UT, yeah, towards the end of ideation phase where you can start with some um, concept testing where you develop some concepts right uh, it is form of it is, it is a form of a UT as well so yeah you can start with some concept testing then you can run some initial usability testing with with your wireframes or you can wait for the ui to be completed where you can create a prototype and then you can run ut so anywhere um, uh, or or also like after your uh, developers are finish developing a product um, if they are okay you know and then and then you kind of use your uh, production environment or your or your or whatever the dev environment to run the uts also so you can run uts at multiple um, uh, phases of the project but again it depends on like depends on like what is your need uh, of of running ut because when i'm running ut at the beginning of the ideation phase that means i'm trying to eliminate uh, um, like a lot of like unknowns upfront. So I would always recommend doing UTs upfront before the developers start developing, um, so that so that so that not a lot lot of time is wasted in developing features which your users might not might not even like, right? So the best case would be like uh, end of the UI phase. That would be the best phase to run the UT. Um, uh, you can also run UT after products being developed, but that's not going to give you like much help because the product product has already made, been developed, and that means your clients would be like a little bit more um, not ready to spend more money to fix the issues. So that's why I always recommend to do the UT by the end of ideation phase and by the end of UI phase, and that will be the best time to do the UTs. Would you suggest to do uh, testing with the users that we have interviewed uh, during our user flow when you make when we make a user flow with the same users that we have interviewed? Um, you so uh, again depends on how niche are your customers. If it is like gentle audiences, hundred uh, percent don't do it. Get some fresh audience. Okay. Um, if it is like let's just say. Uh, pet owners, like what we just discussed, you can obviously get more pet owners. So don't use the same users, use somebody different so that because that person now has a context of what you're trying to build. Right. So, so, so they know what answers would make you happy. And that's what I always tell my, my people that, you know, like most of the time when we do interviews and test with these people, yeah, they are trying to respond to what you're showing them, but but they know their goal is also to make you happy. Uh, that's just like an unconditional bias they have. So they will try to answer you in a way that makes you happy. And it's not it's not like they're trying to do it consciously, but it's just like the way you react when they do something right, you know, you, you'll have like cues, which would give them idea of like, oh, this, this answer is making her happy. So I'm gonna like, you know, give her give her response, feedback in this manner. So that's why I would say like always switch out for like new audiences. If it is like very niche, like for example, um, we, we, uh, there was one time where I was working with, uh, um, like pilots, right? Uh, uh, like aerospace engineers who were working on building the specific, um, uh, component in these uh, helicopters. So those people is, are really hard to come by. I, I had only access to like six people. So I had to like do, uh, uh, do UTs and research and everything with them again and again. Um, so it depends on how niche are your customers. If they are super niche, then it's fine to reuse them. Um, but always like try to um, um, remove the bias and leading questions from your questionnaire. Um, but if they are available everywhere, then just don't 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 go, don't go back to them. But during user flows, do you still suggest or recommend that we should do whatever we have thought of so that uh, we save time moving forward? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question again? During uh, while creating our user flow, some uh, suppose we've done our user flow, we yeah. know that it is good for us. We have decided uh, with within our team. But do you recommend us to do a uh, testing with uh, anybody, any other users, just to be sure that what we are doing, are we doing right, or are we in the right direction? Um, we... Yeah, yeah, sure, hundred percent. I would say yes. If I mean, if you have time and budget, then yeah, go for it, um, because. Your, your your research uh, is going to help you uh, 
give idea on what user wants but the design solution is what user is actually seeing right so 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 it's always get good to get feedback from users by showing them this is what you're going to see in experience because at the at, at the beginning of the project they have told you like what they want but that still has has not been reflected on a screen right so that's why i would recommend you to probably like yeah get some feedback if there is time and budget available for you then definitely get as much feedback feedback as possible thank you so much yeah no problem um i think that's all right right alish yeah. Yeah, those are all questions. Thank you so much for taking the like time and experience to answer them. That was awesome. Yes, I love the presentation. I also love the activity. It was really fun. Um, thank you so much, Halik, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we hope you gain value from it. Uh, feel free to reach out to Halik on LinkedIn, connect with him, uh, ask any questions, uh, follow up questions if you have any. Um, and the recording for this will be uploaded on YouTube and uh, see you on Thursday for our event on testing. Cool. See you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ooh, awesome. I think you already have a couple LinkedIn requests. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Uh, can I have um, Halik's uh, LinkedIn? Uh, yes, I will paste that here. And I just missed the LinkedIn for the uh, the last workshop. Uh, what was her name? She did. Um, I just missed on the LinkedIn because she sent it, but I couldn't open it. I couldn't find her anywhere on LinkedIn. So. Oh, the um, Natalia's? Yes, Natalia's, yes. I want both of them. Yes. Um, Alicia, do you have Natalia's? Yes, I will grab the Natalia's right now. Uh, are you just doing it uh, in, on, okay, here. Uh, this is Halik's and Natalia's. Yeah, I just uh, pasted it in the chat. Yeah, um, I saw the Halik's, but not the Natalia's. Yep, I'm, I'm grabbing Natalia's right now. Thank you. I can look her up. Yeah. No problem. Did you enjoy the presentation, Tanya? It was wonderful. I've always liked Halik's whenever he presents. I always want, I look forward to see him because he's so upfront. He's very easygoing and he gives you like inputs without a load on your mind. So it's very easy with him and very, it's quite clear with him. And the tasks he made us do today was really wonderful. It was I really fun. That. Yeah, I really like that activity too. Yeah, the activities, whatever are in our workshops we do, it really helps me at least. I'm sure it helps others as well. And this time I have thoroughly enjoyed all the three workshops. This is the third, I guess. All the three workshops. Yeah. And it was really, really, really uh, very helpful to me during uh, working on my way out to my tasks. I'm glad that's to awesome. hear that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I see Natalia's. Thank results. you so much, guys, for um, yeah. yeah, thank you so much for actually helping us out with so many uh, workshops. It's really helping us out. It's thank our pleasure. So yeah, see you in the next one. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Mm -hmm. I think um, just in case, physically stop the recording just to make sure that that wasn't um, the issue previously. Okay.